Hello, listening squirrels. How are ya? Let's see. I don't think we have much more left in this story. I wish I could have finished it. I brought my drink in here with me. It should be tea, but it's Pepsi. <laughs> but the sweetest work was for the children, and Effie held her breath to watch these human fairies hang up and fill the little stockings, without which a child's Christmas is not perfect. Putting in things that once she would have thought very humble presents, but which now seem beautiful and precious because these poor babies had nothing. That is so beautiful. I wish I could make Merry Christmases as these good people do and be loved and thanked as they are, said Effie softly as she watched the busy men and women do their work and steal away without thinking of any reward but their own satisfaction. You can if you will. I've shown you the way. Try it and see how happy your own holiday will be hereafter. As he spoke, the spirit seemed to put his arms about her and vanished with a kiss. Oh, stay and show me more, cried Effie, trying to hold him fast. Darlene, wake up and tell me why you're smiling in your sleep, said a voice in her ear. And opening her eyes, there was Mama, bending over her in morning sunshine, streaming into the room. Are they all gone? Did you hear the bells? Wasn't it splendid? She asked, rubbing her eyes and looking about her for the pretty child who was so real and sweet. You've been dreaming at a great rate, talking in your sleep, laughing and clapping your hands as if you were cheering someone. Tell me what was so splendid, said Mama, smoothing the tumbled hair and lifting up the sleepy head. Then while she was being dressed, Effie told her dream, and Nursey thought it very wonderful, but Mama smiled to see how curious, curiously things the child had thought, read, heard, and seen through the day were mixed up in her sleep. The spirit said I could work lovely miracles if I tried, but I don't know how to begin, for I have no magic candle to make feast appear and light up groves of Christmas trees as he did, said Effie sorrowfully. Yes, you have. We'll do it. We'll do it. And clapping her hands, Mama suddenly began to dance all over the room as if she'd lost her wits. How? How? Tell me, Mama, cried Effie, dancing after her and ready to believe anything possible when she remembered the adventures of the past night. I've got it. I've got it. The new idea. A splendid one if only we can carry it out. And Mama waltzed the little girl round till her curls flew wildly in the air while Nursey laughed as if she would die. Tell me, tell me, shrieked Effie. No, no, it's a surprise. A grand surprise for Christmas Day, sung Mama, evidently charmed with her happy thought. Now come to breakfast. For we must work like bees if we want to play spirits tomorrow. You and Nursie will go out shopping and get heaps of things while I arrange matters behind the scenes. They were running downstairs as Mama spoke and Effie called out breathlessly. It won't be a surprise for I know you're going to ask some poor children here and have a tree or something. It won't be like my dream, for they had ever so many trees and more children than we can find, than we can find anywhere. There will be no tree, no party, no dinner in this house at all, and no presents for you. Won't that be a surprise? And Mama laughed at Effie's bewildered face. Do it. I shall like it. I think, and I won't ask any questions, so it will all burst upon me when the time comes, she said. And she ate her breakfast thoroughly, for this really would be a new sort of Christmas. All that morning, Effie trotted after Nursie in and out of shops, buying dozens of barking dogs, woolly lambs, and squeaking birds. Tiny tea sets, gay picture books, mittens, and hoods, dolls, and candy. 
Parcel after parcel was sent home, but when Effie returned, she saw no trace of them. Though she peeped everywhere, Nursie chuckled but wouldn't give her a hint, and went out again in the afternoon with a long list of more things to buy. While Effie wandered forlornly about the house, missing the usual merry stir that went before the Christmas dinner and the evening bun, as for Mama, she was quite invisible all day and came in at night so tired that she could only lie on the sofa to rest, smiling as if some very pleasant thought made her happy in spite of weariness. Is the surprise going on all right? asked Effie anxiously, for it seemed an immense time to wait till another evening came. Beautifully, better than I expected, for several of my good friends are helping, or I couldn't have done it as I wished. I know you will like it, dear, and long remember this new way of making Christmas merry. Mama gave her a very tender kiss, and Effie went to bed. The next day was a very strange one, for when she woke there was no stocking to examine, no pile of gifts under her napkin, no one said Merry Christmas to her, and the dinner was just as usual to her. Mama vanished again and Nursie kept wiping her eyes and saying the dear things is the prettiest idea I ever heard of. No one but your blessed Ma could have done it. Do stop, Nursie, or I shall go crazy because I don't know the secret. Uh, cried Effie more than once, and she kept her eye on the clock, for at seven in the evening the surprise was to come off. The, long for, the longed for hour arrived at last, and the child was too excited to ask questions. When Nurse put on her cloak and hood, led her to the carriage, and they drove away, leaving their house, the one dark and silent one in the road. I feel like the girls in the fairy tales who are led off to strange places and see fine things, said Effie, in a whisper as they jingled, sorry about that, as they jingled through the gay streets. Ah, my dearie, it is like a fairy tale, I do assure you, and you will see finer things than most children will tonight. Steady now and do just as I tell you, and don't say one word whatever you see, answered Nursie, quite quivering with excitement as she patted a large box in her lap and nodded and laughed with twinkling eyes. They drove into a dark yard, and Effie was led through a back door to a little room, where Nurse coolly proceeded to take off not only her cloak and hood, but her dress and shoes also. Effie stared and bit her lips, but kept still until out of the box came a little white fur coat and boots. A wreath of holly leaves and berries, and a candle with a frill of gold paper around it, a long Oh, escaped her then, and when she was dressed and saw herself in the glass, she, she started back, exclaiming, Why, Nursie, I look like the spirit in my dream. So you do, and that's the part you're to play, my pretty. Now, now, Whist, W-H-I-S-T, while I blind your eyes and put you in your place. Shall I be afraid? whispered Effie, full of wonder, for as they went out she heard the sound of many voices, the tramp of many feet, and in spite of the bondage, was sure a great light shone upon her when she stopped. You needn't be. I shall stand close by and your ma will be, will be there. After the handkerchief was tied about her eyes, Nurse left, led Effie up some steps and placed her on a high platform where something like leaves touched her head and the soft snap of lamps seemed to fill the air. Music began as soon as Nurse, as soon as nurse clapped her hands. The voices outside sounded nearer and the tramp was evidently coming up the stairs. 
Now, my precious, look and see how you and your dear Ma have made a Merry Christmas for them that needed it. Off went the bandage and for a uh, and for a minute, Effie really did think she was asleep again. For she actually stood in a grove of Christmas trees, all gay and shining as in her ver as in her version vision, excuse me. Twelve on a side and two rows down the rooms to the little pines, each on its low table, and behind Effie a taller one rose to the roof. Sorry. Hung with wreaths, wreaths of popcorn, apples, oranges, horns of candy, and cakes of all sorts, from sugary hearts to the gingerbread jumbos. On the smaller tree, she saw many of her own discarded toys and those Nursie had bought, as well as heaps that seemed to have rained down straight from that delightful Christmas country where she felt as if she was again. How splendid! Who's it for? What's that noise? Where's Mama? cried Effie, looking with pleasure and surprise. As she stood looking down the brilliant little street from her high place. Before Nurse could answer, the doors at the lower end flew open and in marched twenty-four little blue-gowned orphan girls singing sweetly until amazement changed the song to cries of joy and wonder as the shining spe spectacles appeared, where they stood staring with round eyes at the wildness of wilderness of pretty things about them. Mama stepped up beside Effie and holding her hand fast to give her courage told the story of the dream in a few simple words ending in this way. So my little girl wanted to be a Christmas spirit too and make this a happy day for those who had not as many pleasures and comforts as she has. She likes surprises and we played this for you all she shall play the good fairy and give each of you something from this something from this tree after which everyone will find her own name on a small tree and can go to enjoy it in her own way uh, march by my dears and let us fill your hands nobody told them to do it but all the hands were clapped heartily before a single child before a single child stirred. Then one by one they came to look up wonderingly at the pretty giver of the feast. As she leaned down to offer them great yellow oranges, red oranges, the bunch of let's see, red apples, bunches of grapes, bonbons, and cakes till all were gone and a double row of smiling faces turned toward her as the children filed back to their places in the orderly way they had been taught. Then each was led up to her own tree by the good ladies who had helped Mama with all their hearts, and the happy hubbub that arose would have satisfied even Santa Claus. Santa Claus himself, shrieks of joy, dances of delights, laughter, and tears, for some tender little things could not bear so much pleasure at once and sobbed with mouth, mouths full of candy and hands full of toys. How they ran to show one another the new treasure. How they peeped and tasted, pull, pulled and pinched. Until the air was full of queer noises, the floor covered with papers, and the little trees left bare of all but candles. Wet my whistle time. There's a little fiber for you. It's my wonder yarn. Bougie acrylic. I just happened to have it up here. It's got it. Got to find the re oh the rest of it's over there. I found it. I didn't think I had.
had this bunch to read. <laughs> had to go to sleep on you. How they ran to show one another. No, I got that. Little tree left bare of all but candles. I don't think heaven can be any gooder than this, sighed one small girl. As she looked about her in a blissful maze, holding her full apron with one hand, while she luxuriously carried sugar plums to her mouth with the other. Is that a truly angel up there? Asked another, fascinated by the little white figure with the wreath on its shining hair, who in some mysterious way had been the cause of all this merrymaking. I wish I dared to go and kiss her for this splendid party, said a lame child, leaning on her crutch as she stood near the steps, wondering how it seemed to sit in a mother's lap, as Effie was doing while she watched the happy scenes before her. Effie heard her, and remembering Tiny Tim, ran down and put her arms about the pale child, kissing the wistful face. As she said, sweetly, you may, but Mama deserves the thanks. She did it all. I only dreamed about it. Lame Katie felt as if a true angel was embracing her and could only stammer out her thanks. While the other children ran to see the pretty spirit and touched her soft dress until she stood in a crowd of blue gowns laughing as they held up their gifts for her to see and admire. Mama leaned down and whispered one word to the older girls, and suddenly they all took hands to dance around Effie, singing as they skipped. It was a pretty sight, and the ladies found it hard to break up the happy revel. But it was late for small people and too much fun as a mistake. So the girls fell into line and marched uh, and marched before Effie and Mama again. Fell in line. Oh Lordy, fell in marching and Mama again to say good night with those grateful little faces and the eyes of those who looked grew dim with tears. Mama kissed everyone and many a hungry childish heart felt as if the touch of those tender lips was was their best gift. Effie shook so many small hands that her own tingled, and when Katie came, she pressed a small doll into Effie's hand, whispering, You don't have a single present. We had lots. Do keep that. It's the prettiest thing I got. I will, answered Effie, and held it fast until the last smiling face was gone. The surprise all over, and she's safe in her own bed. Too tired and happy for anything but sleep. Mama, it was a beautiful surprise, and I thank you so much. I don't see how you did it, but I like it best of all the Christmases I ever had and mean to make one every year. I had my splendid big present, and here is the dear little one to keep for love of poor Katie. So even that part of my wish came true. And Effie fell asleep with a happy smile on her lips, her one humble gift still in her hand. And a new home for Christmas in her heart that never changed through a long life spent in doing good. And that's it. Almost 20 minutes worth. And I'll stop there, and tomorrow, hopefully, we'll read Becky's Christmas Dream. The one we just read was a Christmas dream and how it came true. So, Becky's Christmas Dream, hopefully, like I said, tomorrow. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, this light's crazy. I gotta figure it out, but, um... Y'all be sweet, don't be ugly, and have a good night. I hope to see you tomorrow. Tea at 3. Bye-bye.